my sister, Christy Weber, got a, um, an expert, of world, one of the world's foremost bridge authorities, um, engineers, mm -hmm. you know, who, uh, who uh, came to town and proclaimed it um, worthy of being saved. There are a few different theories as to why, to what was motivating people. Yeah. Um, I really think it has to do with money and, and traffic routes and, and various people with various investments here and there. The, mm -hmm. the steel bridge story in and of itself is a whole that we could spend an mm -hmm. entire day just talking about that. I mean, okay. so yeah, that's pretty hard to just, mm -hmm. you know, put into a nutshell. But if you were to put it into a nutshell, that was what, um, where the first Steel Bridge Song Fest came up. Came Jackson up. Brown <coughs> headlined a show and basically it was just an all day concert uh, for the bridge. And um, now, how, now why Jackson Brown? What was his connection to? To you just just because he's my friend. And, okay, and he know, wanted to come and. and he, was willing to do it. Okay, cool. you know, because I used to tell him, you know, what was going on with that, and he thought it was an intriguing story, and he thought it was cool that I was working with my sister to help save a bridge, and he it is he, cool. He wanted to uh, come and support it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and he's been really helpful. In fact, uh, when we decided, um, well, going back another step, then then the following year after the concert to save the bridge. And that was 2005? 2005, 2005, okay. We did one in 2006, but that time we added a whole pub crawl and brought in a lot of bands from all over, to not just to play in the daytime for outside, but to have like a big pub crawl and fill this, the city with songs and have another Steel Bridge song fest mm -hmm. that was like more elaborate. And um, uh, we, we added a songwriting week to where people came a week beforehand and wrote anthems, you know, wrote songs inspired by the bridge um, so that at the end of the week during these shows now the whole, the whole concert could be infused with all these songs that sprang out of this area, this situation and, and this, you know, honoring this bridge and so I figured, you know, if, if if we could get a whole lot of people writing a lot of songs. So they wrote about 70 songs, and, and, and part of it was we had a couple recording studios in the motel. It was called the Construction Zone, where the writers get together and collaboratively write and record for the whole week, and that was the year that I was invited to come up, and yep. I wasn't going to come. I, you know, I'm thinking, a whole week? Come on, you know, it's just going to be a big party, and I don't need to take off a week. At that time I was... Um, doing my own gigs and uh, teaching cello privately. And I was working on my master's in cello at UWM in Milwaukee. And I'm oh, like, okay. I'm not, you know. And, and then Pat stays after me to come up and, and, and convinced me simply by saying, you know, I think you really should do this because I, I think once you've done it, then, you know, you're going to look back and think to yourself and to think I almost didn't go. We are partial to people who play unusual instruments. You know, the, other than guitars, you know, I mean, we have plenty of guitar players and I love the guitar and, 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 um, and, uh, and the people who play them, but, uh, but to make a really good band and a good mix of music, you need people who play all kinds of different instruments. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's sort of what happens during these things, too. Um, it becomes like a big band at the end and there's all these people sharing the stage and you know people who've never played together before um, a big band yeah. slash family reunion of yeah. people who aren't actually related other than mm -hmm. through music